Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Inkellis Combo. You have me, Kyle, Mr. Big Kyle, as I go by. And before we get into today's guest, I do want to say like the last episode where one I'm not going to tell you who it is because you should go and check it out. It actually might end up being here somewhere or it'll be down there or wherever magically is. But it's very like emotional and um mental health wise and it kind of took a different turn but I do want to say like if you've ever struggled with anything like that you know my dms are open plus the person said his dms were open anyway but yeah that's not today's podcast today's podcast is with somebody that's actually in the same industry as me and it's Mr Edward Fleming how are you doing mate I'm good thanks how are you yeah I'm good thank you I'm good I'm good yeah well um kind of just taken back by your profile at first because one you have like probably the second best beard I've ever seen on LinkedIn. And two, you kind of have like a, you kind of have a, um, you started really, really young, if I'm right in saying that. I want to say it was about 14, you kind of started getting involved with video and stuff like that. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, yeah. When I was 14, I was I was hired by my local council uh, to make, well, it wasn't actually to make videos. It was to run a, a social networking thing for young people to connect the council and uh, the young people of the area. Uh, and uh, I went along to my interview and I bought my laptop and showed off all my videos that I've been doing. Uh, and I was adamant that the council should use that to connect with the young people because tweets and blog posts aren't enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Today, to be honest, it would be a podcast. If I were to get that job today, I'd probably pitch the council doing a podcast over video because nowadays, if they did video, it would just be a bit cheesy. And I don't think, you know, the, the local council on TikTok, I don't think would do well. I think they'd, they'd think it would be very cringy, but a podcast would work. To see the but no, um, doing all the dances and stuff like that, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, oh no. I, I can imagine there is a council out there somewhere that's using TikTok. But back in back in 2012, it was all YouTube videos. So we just filmed all the good happenings that were going on, really. But it was weird. I, I just worked for the council part time for two years, making videos and, and running this thing called the Young Network Group with a bunch of other kids. Um, yeah, they were all doing different stuff, social media, blog posts. And I was kind of brought in as the um, guy that made videos. So I kind of had my own like job from... 14 which was cool but I think even though I wanted to make videos before that I uh that was kind of the point where I thought okay this is my this is my career now this is what I've got to work towards and um everyone that went to school with me would tell you that that was what I'd do for a living no, no matter what oh Ed he'll make videos for a living he already does it was like it was cool I liked that about me and I kind of stuck with it yeah the <laughs> the you know, at 14 to have that sort of like, tech, I mean, you get smart people, but like to have that sort of like technical stuff back then, um, I won't exactly say what age you are, but back in that day, it makes you sound really old. That's not what I mean. Back in when we were younger, it kind of, we kind of like had a, social media was there, as you're saying, videos were there, YouTube was there, but it wasn't like, it's nowhere near as popular. I mean, this is on YouTube. It's nowhere near as popular as what it is now. So yeah. where did you kind of like, there must, I mean, obviously all kids watch YouTube, but like, when did you kind of take that turn to be like, I'm kind of going to go from here watching YouTube to here to creating it to then here to then putting it up? Where did you kind of, how did, what age did that kind of start at then? Oh, that's mad. I've actually never been asked that question ever. Um, yeah, so I guess, I guess I was always watching videos growing up. So before YouTube, I can't even remember the names of the websites I'd be watching videos on, uh, but it would be, to, it wouldn't be browsing a website at all. I would just be sent a link to, this is making me sound really old. I'm only 23. Yeah, that's but, I don't want to say your age, I was like, well, that's like, you're not that old. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, that's what I remember. And, and then I think, I started making videos on my webcam on my computer. So I don't have a cool story like, oh, I got bought a camera for my birthday and I started there. Like I, I was using the webcam on, on my laptop uh, straight onto, not iMovie, the Windows equivalent, Windows Movie Maker. And yeah, I think I, I think I was inspired by YouTubers really, but the really early YouTubers, like I find them so cheesy now, but have you, do, do you remember Smosh? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah yeah channels like that and like charlie is so cool like who would do uh sketches but they would be really really homemade and uh, they made you feel like you could start being a success story and making videos right this second rather than the dream of growing up and working on tv in 20 years time it was like oh wow you can make something of yourself now um and yeah but i've always i've always loved just being creative really i, I make music in my spare time um I just yeah I just always love making things so the idea of making something that could get seen I think I thought logically as as a 12 year old I thought hmm if I make music it's probably not going to be good because I'm 12 <laughs> whereas if I make videos I might be able to do something funny which older people will like and as I grow up I I realized that people only liked it because it was cute because I was 12 and not because I was a uh, comedy genius <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but yeah, where, where did you um? So you went to, you kind of like as you said, started when you were like as we said, started when you were really young. But where did you? Because you went to uni as well. So, but so I guess when you were that kind of age, it's probably an obvious question. But was it always a thing where um, you knew you were going to make videos? I know you've already said that, but like even career-wise, you were like, this is what I genuinely want to do. There was no. Even though you have already said it, was there any outlays you're like, because a lot of people say they want to be a fireman, an astronaut, or, or like the king or anything like that. Was there anything you were like, I kind of want to do this? Or was it always, no, video making, you know, business, all this type of stuff? Um, yeah, well, instead of A-levels, I did a, a B-Tech diploma, uh, a college in Nottingham in TV and film. So very lucky that there was a cool place in Nottingham where... Uh, you could get your hands on a camera and get graded for it instead of doing A-levels. So I think university wasn't the big decision. It was doing that instead of A-levels because then um, going to university to do that just felt like, hmm, do I want to continue studying? If the answer is yes, then I study film. If, if the answer is no, then I go straight into running my own business or going somewhere to get some experience. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, no, there was there was never any doubt. It was it was really weird. There was, there was just never any doubt. I just wanted to do that, really. Um, I also like I love making music. So the only thing I've ever been tied between is that and and music. But at the same time, um, I don't think I'd enjoy making music in a corporate way, whereas making videos in a corporate way, I do find fun because you can really get creative, even if you've got a client that's um, a law firm, for example, where you wouldn't want to make a really fun video, you can still get creative with it and make something fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So I felt, yeah, video was the right path because no matter in what context, I kind of enjoyed myself. So, yeah. yeah. You've kind of worked for like football clubs, councils, and um, the one that really, really got me was that you, what, what did you do for JP Morgan? Like, what was, because I'm quite a business economic guy, and I was like, as soon as I seen that, I was like, that, that caught my eye. I was curious about that one. What, what was that? Um, that was whilst I was at university. My, my university, Ravensbourne, uh, got um, chosen for a lot of things. They'd often get hired to make projects, and they select students to do it. Um, which is cool. And, and that was, you know, it's embarrassing. I can't really remember because it's such a huge client, but it was, it was a charity scheme they were doing. That's all I remember. I'm so sorry. It was a charity <laughs> no, it's all good. thing. We, we made a three minute promotional video um, for them about this charity scheme. And I can't remember what the charity was and that's bad of me. Um, um, yeah, but one funny story from that, though, is that when we turned up at JP Morgan, um, the security wouldn't let me in and they were really angry at me. Uh, and I had no idea why. Uh, and they wouldn't tell me why they were angry as well. They were just like, wait there, wait there, wait there. Uh, and we, we were hired by them to make this video. So I'm very confused. Um, and then all of a sudden they're, they're searching my bags and they, they thought I basically thought I was a terrorist, but they they wouldn't ask me why I was there for ages. And I, I was saying there's a camera in my bag. But no, no, I had a laugh with the security guards afterwards. So I don't want to have a go at JP Morgan. They were very nice in the end. But 
Yeah. That's all I remember from that. And I think the stress of them thinking I was a terrorist for half an hour probably is the reason that I can't remember the actual shoot because all yeah. I remember was the interrogation at the, <laughs> at the reception. But but no, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't give you a good answer for that because I, I genuinely don't remember. Um, hey, no, it's all good. Yeah. The, the, I mean, it's quite a funny story to be honest. I've never had anybody being accused of being a terrorist for simply wanting to work for the company. That's brilliant. That's proper brilliant. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> now you went from there to is it cluster? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Um, cluster. What, no, was, um, what was your creative consultant there? But part time. So was that while you were at uni as well, or was that after uni? Or yeah. So uh, maybe maybe I'm being uh, a bit cheeky by putting that at that stage on my LinkedIn because all I really did for Cluster was I lived with the founder uh, and every day I'd have conversations about it. Cluster's this big uh, new platform. It's like um, it's like imagine imagine Twitter, imagine Slack. Uh, it's a note-taking platform, but you can use it for anything. Just create create ideas, plan stuff, uh, organize minutes for meetings. Um, it's it's going to launch next month, and uh, I, I guess back when I was at university, um, I was kind of just assisting the founder with kind of advice on how I personally would use Cluster uh, every day. Uh, we'd sit down for a cup of tea and he'd tell me about what he'd been doing that day uh, and I'd just chat to him about it really and I wasn't the only person to do this either I, I guess there's at least five or six people that could technically put that on their LinkedIn as what they did because it really did feel like Cluster was a part-time job for everyone in the house because everyone was so involved in the foundations of it really um, and uh, yeah but it was never being built at the time. It was it was a concept, really, um, a, a Ravensbourne um, incubation project as well, which is like the universities, uh, the way they help startups. So it was a Ravensbourne incubation thing. So it was a legitimate thing, not just an idea. But um, yeah, I, I can't say I came up with the idea for Cluster at all, but I, I definitely had a, an influence back in the day. But now... Now I know I can say that for a fact because I'm hev heavily involved in it now. So yeah, you're yeah, saying, yeah. Um, before we talk about that, I'm curious. You're saying stayed in the house. Is that like um, it won't be student halls? Was that be like student accommodation type thing? No, no. This is this is uh, the more serious side of uni. This is the third year of university. So uh, I lived with them in a house in Peckham. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So I, I didn't actually live in student halls properly. I actually um. Uh, my mum told me that it was a waste of money and to be honest she was right but only because it's London mm. um, because the London student halls were so expensive so for my first year of uni I lived with an old lady uh, a really nice lady just like she posted an advert online for a spare room so I didn't exactly have the student experience in my first year that everyone else did uh, and she would probably give me give me the eyes if I came back after midnight and I had to be very quiet and cook my meals after she cooked her meals and it was just not the university life that I wanted to be honest but she was nice mm. and then in the in the second year it was straight into moving into a house with friends and obviously that third year it was the the cluster house really mm. um yeah and I moved in with them just because um they they also studied film so they they love making videos and they also love making music and i love both of those things um and i just kind of fell into it really i'm very fortunate i can't say that i was uh on the video side i can say that i'm qualified but on the cluster side i can't go yes and i was hired because i did just live with the founder i feel like i'm very lucky but at the same time um i am definitely the right person to get on the project because i get on with the founder so well and I uh, know everything about cluster at every stage so um yeah but no anyway I know I'm going on a tangent but a little bit of uh advice is that uh if you see a startup even if it's making absolutely no money at all uh try and get involved send send them an email in those early stages of cluster um all we've done is, you know, it's registered as a limited company. There's about four or five people involved. No one's making any money, but they plan on doing that in the future. You, if we would have got a message from someone that 
made films or specialized in marketing and they said hi like I know you're not making any money don't worry I've got time maybe could I just have some shares in the company or something uh, and we'll do some work for you we would have accepted that work back then uh, and then I'm not cluster isn't a success story by any means yet but it's it's a funded project now that their, their shares would be would be valuable so um Obviously, I'm fortunate I lived with the founder, but we there's so many businesses out there, especially at university, like university incubation projects that would accept that kind of free work in return for shares. And you never know what could be the next big thing. You just never know, especially if you like the idea as well. If you like the idea, then it's more likely to be successful, right? So Yeah, yeah. you're more likely to put your time and effort into it as well if you actually like what you're yeah. working on and what you're involved in. I'm so for that as well, like, I preach it in every podcast, everybody I speak to, uh, where it be Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, <clears throat> YouTube, it doesn't matter. I'm always preaching to people that volunteer work isn't unpaid labor. It's not. Volunteer no. work is work where you can demonstrate your like creative abilities, your what you can do mentally. You can demonstrate to people because at the end of the day, if you create, as I'm speaking to loads of different kinds of people that are at um, you know, our level and then way up, they all say the thing is that like, if you've worked for them in a volunteer way as a one project and then they get a job in like a bigger company where that be <clears throat> Amazon, BBC, anything like ISTV, whatever, that type of way up there, they'll be like, whatever, I worked with him before for free, bring him in, we'll pay him or her, we'll pay him. It's, it's not, it very rarely happens, but it has happened. It's happened loads of times when you speak to people. So I think like, yeah, you're definitely, you're definitely right on that one. But are you still kind of like, um, are you employed by Cluster now or are you that you, is that you finished with them or? No, no. Um, so I only started with Cluster officially a couple of weeks ago. So, All right, okay, um, okay. so in, in locked, I lived in London. I, I had a job in London making videos for a marketing company. Uh, and I moved back to Nottingham in, in lockdown and I managed to keep my job, but remotely. I taught myself to animate. Uh, so I was doing After Effects stuff remotely. And then uh, eventually I left that job and I started my own production company, Spinning Shapes, which is still a thing, hopefully, even though I've joined Cluster. But um, yeah, I just got chatting to Ethan again, the founder who I lived with. Uh, uh, we're having a phone call uh, in December and he just said, um, Cluster's almost ready. I just need to get everything done on the marketing side. And I just set up my whole business that claims to make videos uh, for marketing purposes mm -hmm. so I just said oh why don't you uh, I was kind of joking really I was just like oh well you should just you know hire me as your head of marketing and uh, I'll start making videos and I'll put 100% into cluster and he went oh that's a great idea let's do that <laughs> so now I'm, I'm technically full-time for cluster um, I think all it took was um, the fact that I'd you know, lived with him. And then the fact that when I didn't live with him, I was working for a marketing company. So kind of got two years of experience on that. Um, but the main reason I'm hired, even though I may be underqualified for a head of marketing, is that the route we're going down is almost exclusively video. We're going to go heavily down the video route, uh, YouTube ads, etc. But also the social media content will be so much more fun if everything is a video rather than lots of text-based posts. So um, that's where I thought, you know what? No, I am my money's worth because we'll, we'll do loads of videos and that's my area. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but no, that's brand new. So technically I'm a new employee for Cluster, but I've been involved for a long time, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you were kind of like helping out before and then when it, like you were saying, when it kind of kicked off, they were like, Kind of literally what I just said. They were literally, you literally you were vol te technically volunteering, and then you did such yeah. a good job. Even though you know the owner, he was like, "I'll take you on." That's 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 uh, yeah, that's that's well done. You. That's a crazy story. But was the so you said you saying it was a uni? What did you call it? A uni something project. Um, I mean, Ethan would probably kill me for saying this because it, it was way more than a um, an incubation project. Incubation, that was incubation the one, yeah. is, yeah, I'm not sure if you know, I think other universities call it that as well. It's not, te not funded by the university at all, but they give you, after your degree, they give you a space uh, in the uni to use like as a desk 
uh, or like as a business address as well, just to help you get started. And the, the, obviously the same lecturers will give you advice as well. So if you've got a business idea, once you're finishing uni, you could go to um, someone and say, oh, I've got this idea for a business. Can I be an incubation project where you guys can help me start it? So at the time it was like an incubation project, but now it, now it's way more than that. It's, it's almost a thing. Um, yeah, not that incubation projects aren't a thing, but cluster was a concept really um, for a long time. And then um, Ethan has kind of, Ethan moved to Wales and he's been in the middle of nowhere in Wales, teaching himself to code and, and building this platform by himself. So this is why I keep saying I can't take much credit in it because I'm about to do a lot of marketing, but this man has moved to Wales and spent a year of his life just teaching himself to you should be interviewing him <laughs> he's just been teaching himself to code for for an entire year and has built this uh this platform which uh the idea has been going on for years and years and years but it was never a thing uh and we're less than a month away now yeah. what's the uh, what what's you know i don't i don't necessarily obviously don't want to i don't necessarily want to make it all about class but i'm intrigued to be honest so what it was the you found out you said his name you know was Ewan did he uh, was it Ewan or Ethan did you say it was? Ethan Ethan, Ethan. Yeah. that's the one I thought you said thought you said Ewan the <laughs> the uh, so was he in your uni class or was that just was it just was he like you kind of just met him at uni because you said you lived with him so was he I've never yeah. been to I've not been to uni yet but did you stay did you meet him at uni or what was the the transition yeah. there? Yeah, um, yeah, he was on the on the same course as me um, at university. He was never in the same class as me, but he was studying film production uh, as well as me. I, I, I was studying film production knowing that I was going to make videos after university. Uh, to be honest, uh, the reason I went to uni is because uh, it buys you a ticket to London. So that's why I went. I was like, I'm going to make loads of connections in London. It's going to be worth it. And you get to use lots of camera equipment um yeah you don't have to fork out for all your own expensive gear you can do professional projects with professional kit just by hiring it from uni so that's why i did it ethan uh was a great writer so um when i met him he was purely focused on on writing films uh and we we did work together on a few films that was fun but i actually met him at the end of the second year uh like a little study group about dissertations and I, my dissertation was to do with, at the time, it was to do with friction in music, you know, the little uh, hairs that stand uh, yeah. on your arm, like when uh, there's like an amazing point in a song. And I didn't, I, I ended up not doing that in the end, but uh, he was fascinated by the fact that I wasn't doing something about film and that I was thinking about something else. And then turns out that whilst at university, he hadn't been thinking about film and he'd been thinking about something else. And that something else was the internet a new platform cluster so um yeah um yeah that and and i guess we both love football and you know get on well together but mainly mainly that yeah uh, so would you say uni because oh, this is such an this is an obvious question and those who watch you know podcasts where i've spoken to students and that before well like myself will be able to like be like he's asking that question again but would you say uni is worth it then Ooh. Oh, it's weird. I really, because I, I bet if you did a poll with everybody that studied film production with me, I reckon it would be 50 50 yes and no. For me, I will only say yes because of where I am today. That's pretty much the only reason. I don't want to change history. I'm quite happy with how things are going at the moment, touch wood. But, um, it really depends what you study. I mean, if you want to be a doctor, it's essential. So yes, if you if you want to make art, for example, oh, it's weird because if you want to learn more about how art is made and, and discover lots of different artists, then yeah, it's worth it. But uh, do you need to go to university to become an artist? No, definitely not. Um, it's exactly the same with film, but the, one of the main reasons I went to uni, like I said, was for the equipment <laughs> mm. uh, and the, the studio space, things that 
you just wouldn't be able to do if if you went freelance on your own straight out of uni, not out of uni, out of college or whatever. College, yeah. So um, like, I don't know. It's it's a it's a good question. I think it it really depends what you do in the creative industries. It's all about who you know, and if you already know people, then. I probably wouldn't advise uni. If I knew someone in the film industry, then I wouldn't wouldn't have gone to uni. But I know no one in the film industry. My mum's a primary school teacher. So, uh, mm. yeah, so like, yeah, no, no one that makes films really other than myself. So university was that um, place where I knew I'd meet loads of people that made films. Uh, whereas um, if if you want, if you've got a, if you've got an aspiration that you know someone that is doing that job then maybe you can get in through that way it's just how do you get into the industry if you know no one then university is a great option definitely but yeah. if you already know people in the industry then um then yeah i guess university isn't essential but if you love if you love learning university is great yeah. um yeah i know i know some people have really disappointing experiences at university but others love learning they love studying they love they, they enjoy writing essays if you're that kind of person then uh then definitely go to university in my case it was the only way i was going to move to london because there was no way i was so inexperienced there was no way i was getting a job in london it's the only way of moving to, felt like the only way of moving to london uh and it was a way of living in london and being forced to make uh, like 10 films a year being forced to make 10 films a year sounds amazing that's like my dream so mm. yeah it was no, <clears throat> yeah because I was glad you didn't ask what the other people say to start with you I get that the what the thing a lot of people will say is that it is worth it but you can come to me if I had this is what they say I'm not saying literally me but if you could you could come to me with a, a degree in any subject that I had a business in, and then your mate could come for a degree. Okay, cool. So then I'd be asking, okay, uni is only, you know, two or three days a week. There's seven days in a week. Yeah. What are you doing in your spare time to do with that subject? Like it was creating. And if you're like, oh, nothing. I was only at uni and I was, you know, going to the gym or going out drinking or doing all this sort of stuff. It's like, okay, so, but then the other guy's like, oh, actually, I was working on my own YouTube channel. I was working on my own podcast. Yes. I was working on my own stuff. And then he's like, ah, well, I'd actually, even if the boy got a, this was just a true story, by the way. Um, If you go back, you'll be able to find that Dale Beekles, the guy's name for everybody that wants to see it, said that, and uh, he's in social media marketing, actually. But uh, he said, uh, he, he turned in and said, yeah, I would hire the guy that's even got a D or a C or anything like that, because at the end of the day, he's been working on projects. The reason why he didn't do good in uni is because he's done all this sort of stuff. So even if you've got a degree, cool, it's still not going to get you the job. Just yeah. what, not nowadays, because it's all about people like, um, you know, Grant Cardone's a great one. So everybody, because there's loads of people you can name, but everybody knows who Grant Cardone is. He's the same thing. If you're not working on, if you're not making money while you sleep, you're not making money. It's the same thing. If you're not learning whilst you're not at college now or uni now, you're the odd one out. The end thing now is to actually be working 24-7, not partying 24-7. That's not the real end thing now type thing. So we're, it's a weird tangent that we could go off on for the next three hours or something like that, but just very relatable to yourself, to be honest with you, how you're working on your craft, I would say, but yeah. also doing a degree and stuff. So employers clearly, clearly like that's why you probably you still got involved with Cluster as well. One, because he's your mate, but two, because he knows you actually put the time and the effort at uni whilst actually doing that type of job. Yeah. But it's crazy, but a very, very, um, a question before we talk about a lot to do about your business and that spinning shapes, I do want to ask, um, do you think, you personally, because I don't get to speak to a lot of like business, but, well, business owners I do, like, you know, I just mentioned Dale and stuff like that, but, and uh, Doogie Brimson, who owns Red Bus Movie. So remember that name, I'll tell you, but I'll speak to you about that after the podcast, actually. It's how you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Remember that, remember his name. Um, they, I've, I've asked them that them this, and uh, their responses were quite, you know, informational. And the way they said it was very, like, just brutally honest. And I loved that. And everybody loved it. They've seen it. Like, they're amazing people. But do you think 
social you need to watch you personally need to watch what you post on social media because it will reflect back on your business not on your business's page on your page your personal page by by what do you mean be careful like tread lightly no no like because you get a lot of people posting them going out drinking with their mates or they're doing this or they're putting stuff they just shouldn't put online do you think you kind of need to like take that back a little bit when you want to be in the public eye or do you do you not think that matters um i think i think for cluster probably yes for spinning shapes no i think spinning shapes is my own thing and at, at the end of the day we make the thing is i've just done some work for the criminal justice system so my answer should be yes <laughs> i've got to be careful. Uh, so it, it should really be yes um but at the same time i don't agree I, I, the internet is for everyone at the end of the day and i don't agree with everyone uh just using it to have a professional profile uh the internet is every young person's escape it's escapism and uh if all your stuff on social media if all your profiles is just work related stuff i don't think you're using the internet right i think the internet is for fun it's not just for business um but maybe if you want to be professional on the internet maybe you keep those things separate this is why i love linkedin because it doesn't try to be anything else it really just it here's your professional social media profile i if i was hiring someone i probably wouldn't care what they post on facebook because uh it's facebook whereas on linkedin i'd expect them to be professional and talk about their work um i like that separation i think linkedin does it well um but twitter for example uh it, it, it goes either way some people would post about them drinking or they'd say something relatable that's definitely not safe for work um but some people also on twitter would be a ceo that posts inspirational stuff on twitter and i think both of them are fine but i don't know i think for, for cluster um cluster is a platform that is going to be available to the general public so if it does well then people are bound to see stuff that Ethan and I have posted in the past, for example. Um, and I don't think, I don't think it really matters up until the point where you start the business, really. Yeah. Um, but still, um, if someone's like, if there's a video, there's no video of me really drunk on the internet. There is none. But if there was a video of me ridiculously drunk on the internet, and someone in five years' time was like. The head of marketing of Cluster, look at him. Look at him. He's an absolute disgrace. <laughs> look at him. He's on the floor. He's ridiculously off his face. Mm. I mean, would I mind? I'd probably be a bit disappointed, but that's circulating. But no, it's not that bad at all. I mean, if you're doing something illegal, that's another thing. Um, it just, it, that's another thing. But just purely based on, it really is. Again, it's another very debatable thing and it depends who you're hired by because for my own business, um, maybe a video of me getting really drunk or something would um, would it would probably limit me for cluster, yes. I don't think I don't think I'd get fired over it. I don't think no. But again, I wouldn't want the public viewing me like that because uh, I am representing cluster, but for spinning shapes um it wouldn't affect me at all no yeah. uh, maybe maybe a um a notable client wouldn't use me for that reason but it wouldn't end my career um definitely not i don't know um it's a weird topic because i'm not advising people to be uh, completely silly on, on linkedin for example but the internet uh, is a very free place and i do think that um, if you fire someone or don't hire them based on the fact that, um, I don't know, they, they made a FIFA video when they were younger and, and swore at the goalkeeper or something like that, like, I think it's ridiculous to look at any of that stuff uh, in a bad light. It's, it's the internet, it's escapism, it's memes. Um, let it be. Yeah. Uh, if you try and make the internet too commercial uh, and too corporate, um, it will die. So keep the memes coming, keep the fun stuff coming. Just, just know when to be professional. That's yeah. 
I've never really thought about that before. So my advice there is probably all over the place. I've never really considered that, but it's a good question. Very good question. Yeah, I appreciate that. It, it's again, it it depends on who the person. I'm, it depends on who the person I'm asking. Like the to the answer I'm getting, where it'd be like, you know, some of it's involved in creative, like Doogie said, along the lines of the. I don't care if you've got a degree or not. Like it doesn't matter to me. What have you been doing? Have you? And yeah. I asked him about the social media stuff, and he was like, "As long as you're just not being," an, he said, "As long as you're not being an idiot online or being racist or doing anything stupid." Oh, exactly. Yeah. But other people have said no. Like, you know, you need to keep it professional online. There's stuff you can't post, which I'm totally agree with. But then, you just you really? can. And my view on it is that it kind of wavers from day to day sometimes, but. Yeah, you do have to keep a professional about it totally, but you kind of have to be real at the same time. So maybe don't swear all the time. That's just not because of my beliefs in swearing, but that's just genuinely not. Just maybe don't do that. Do it, obviously, because that's who you are, but not all mm. the time. Maybe like keep your views sometimes to yourself at some time. They just, again, but if you, that's if, or if you want to be like a public figure, my personal opinion on it, if you want to be a public figure, and you and you don't mind the hate and the judging and negativity on you go like if you can take it fair enough but do remember a tweet from five years ago and i'm preaching out to everybody not just yourself but to everybody a tweet from five years ago can be screenshotted and brought look at kevin hart you know what i mean like 10 years ago 15 years ago it's, it's crazy yeah. and it i i think you do i think like i think sometimes you do sometimes you don't like that's the way yeah. I, the way I look at it. To be honest with you, it all depends on like the person and the time and all this sort of stuff. But how do you um, on the on the line of stuff like that? I don't know if you've not received any because we haven't talked about this before. But how do you how do you deal with negativity? Or do you, have you never really <laughs> experienced yeah. it in a certain way? Or oh, back in back in school, it it was it was every day <laughs> when I was making videos, like from probably the age of twelve to. 16 every day and I was ridiculed for some of the videos I was making since then not so much uh not so much at all but back in back in them I mean back when I was a kid uh they were they, the people that were taking the mick out of me they were in a a lower class than me um and they were um, they were jealous of the fact that I had something going on. Uh, I wasn't successful at all, but um, I know when, when your mum says, oh, the reason they're taking the mick is because they're just jealous. She's right. She's totally right. Mm. Because uh, I was, I mean, I didn't, I don't think I was a bully in school, but anyone that I mocked in school, uh, even if it was just in my head, like, oh, not this person. And now I think back about it, I just think, oh, they were way, they were either hotter than me, they were more clever than me, or they were more successful or had something going on than me. Mm. Uh, and I do think that the people that took out the mick out of me, I wasn't hotter than them. <laughs> I definitely wasn't cleverer than them. But I did have something going for me, which is the fact that I had a passion uh, that I was pursuing. And, and back in the day, uh, at school, the only passion that you'd pursue would be football, uh, really. For, for a guy, it would be uh, he either plays for the local team or not. That's that's how successful you are. But I, I had this new thing that, that the other kids didn't have, which was oh, he made videos on YouTube. And nowadays, every kid at school makes videos on YouTube and TikTok. So mm -hmm. uh, very different. But uh, I guess the way I dealt with it... Um, I guess I just kind of, I think I just laughed it off, really. Uh, probably in the first couple of years of people taking the mick out of me for making videos, I probably was, yeah, I, I did get upset by it. But um, no, eventually I just kind of laughed it off because uh, I think I thought, hi, you, you may have taken the mick out of me for my latest video, but you've just watched it. You've given me a view. <laughs> mm. So I'm the one that wins here. You're, you're viewing my content, whether you like it or not. Mm. Um but I don't think I've received much hate and criticism since. I'm, I'm quite a positive person. I don't really, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really, I wouldn't really have a conversation and start something negative with anyone. So I don't think I've got, don't think there's anyone out there that would um, be saying negative stuff about me because I'd probably be quite positive about them. So mm. um, but that's just my outlook really. But how I deal with it is normally if, if someone's 
if someone's bullying you or or criticizing you heavily uh sometimes there's a reason for it but most of the time they're jealous uh, and i do like i said i do sound like a mum for saying that but i think it's a fact most of the time they're jealous even now i look at girls on on tiktok that do dance videos and in my head i think oh this is so cringy like even now i think that in my head but then i think about it again and i think yeah, it is cringy, but the actual reason I'm annoyed is because I really wish I was hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more for that. I'm, um, I was a completely different guy. This is not about. We could literally talk for, and I mean it. And people will know that know me will know I'm not lying to you at all. Is that we could literally talk for hours about me. And the thing is, I, I left at a young age, and uh, the bullying stopped. But like to this day. I still get people trying to like widen me up from school and stuff, but it's only common on videos. If I see them in the street, all right, care what's happening. You good, man? I'm like, yep. But it wasn't good from what you said on, oh, I'm sorry, I was drunk or that. All right. And then the next night, oh, what's happening? And it rarely happens now, maybe once every couple of months or something like that, somebody pops up. But I'm, it's all, all the time for me. It's like, I mean, for those people that know me, I'm a six foot five strong man. So <laughs> I've never really had somebody come up to me, <laughs> to my face in a long time. So it, it makes me laugh. I think bullying in that is a subject that, I mean, I went, when I left school, it's not, this is not about me, but when I left school, I went from there to uh, working on the doors when I was 18, 28 now, so 10 years ago, I became sober at 18 and then became, started working the doors. So I've been called everything under the sun. I had glasses, I had like really ginger hair, I had a beard, I was really, really fat. I was called everything. Let you can just imagine the names I got called. So like calling somebody a name now, negativity is fine. As I say to people, it's like if somebody gives you negativity, all they're doing, all all you they've you've done for years and years and years, or for the past 20 minutes, hour, whatever, is you've made something, like you said, that's annoyed them because they can't do it, or the fact that you're literally living in their head rent-free. Because most yeah, of the oh, time, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. Most of the time people think it matters. It's like, I, I feel, I personally feel sorry when somebody brings up something. I'm like, man, your, your life, brutally honest, your life sucks that much that you're having to take it out on me. Wow, like, can I give you a hug? Or bend down the way and give you a hug. That's, that's the way I feel. I'm like, I feel sorry <laughs> for you, you know what I mean? And the fact that, like, I was just, I was uh, better this to the fact that because I was brought up with a woman, I have a different side, like, just my mum brought me up with my brother and my sister, but obviously my actual mum. And it, it gave me, like, a better outlook. And she always said that, like, you have to remember that people's actions, if somebody's giving you stick or someone's doing anything or somebody's, you know, I see kids fighting in the street or whatever, whatever it may be, if I see something, it's always like, yeah, remember that it's probably because their parents do that. So their parents speak to them like that, or their parents, like, you're a reflection of your parents. So exactly. if you're a genuine, nice per person, like my mom, I genuinely don't, I'm not, everybody knows me, knows I'm not an evil guy. I just am it. I'll take everyone on the chin because, like, I know that your parents maybe brought you up wrong because I can't say 100% because obviously you never know. But, like, their parents brought them up wrong to think it's okay to say it. It makes me feel sorry for them. I genuinely do. But anyway, that's a whole other subject we could talk about for ages. And that's not where this is about you. But, so I'm like, again, it's hard because the usual questions I ask people, it's going to be difficult because a lot of them are very obvious with yourself. But have you always made to, like, did you always, I know I've kind of already asked you this, but... Did you always have the passion of like doing videos? And if you did, did you always have the passion of like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life? Or was it, I know you said you come out of uni and you're going to make videos, but was it like something else? You were like, I might need to get a part-time job to help myself. Or was it no, it's videos or that's it. Or how, how was it for yourself? Um, it's, it's, it's always been videos. Always. When, um, yeah, when I started making videos at like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I knew that I was going to do that for a living. When I was when I was 14 and I thought, oh, we could do videos for the council, that was the first time I thought I could make corporate videos for a living, videos as a service, mm -hmm. rather than... Before that, I thought oh, I was going to make my own videos for a living, be, a, be an entertainer, or make short films, uh, do that sort of thing. Uh, and then the realism kicked in 
uh, when I was, I, I don't want to say realism actually, because uh, there's so many successful examples of YouTube comedians, but um, for my path anyway, it was a really realistic goal. As soon as I started making videos for the council, I thought, wow, I've got such a good head start here and I haven't lost the passion for making videos. The flame is still burning. So gonna ride that and i just did the whole way until now i still enjoy making videos when someone contacts me saying i'd like you to animate something or i'd like you to direct something or edit something uh i find it fun and and i love and my favorite part of it's editing that's so um sometimes if you want to start editing you've got to make the project happen to begin with so uh I've always just made projects but no i do, i have had part-time jobs um i worked for like i just haven't listed it on my linkedin um i i think um i, I don't think there's anything wrong with listing your part-time jobs on linkedin at all i think maybe you should but i want i wanted to keep mine crystal clear because there's a lot of random part-time jobs uh, yeah. and it probably makes me look less committed but <laughs> but my main job is actually i live um or i grew up near a really posh hotel called langer hall in nottingham and i worked there um from the age of probably 13 uh, on a sunday till 20 <laughs> uh, other than university but even when I was at university I worked there in the summer and I came back in the holidays and worked there uh, and I did everything like I'm not as big as yourself but I, I am six foot two and I used to uh, lift heavy bags over my shoulder all the linen uh, and carry the all the glasses and, and the wine bottles and do all the heavy lifting kind of stuff mm. uh, and occasionally had to wash a guest's car for a tip and stuff like that um, and I did that for years it was like every Sunday for years a part of my life so mm. yeah yeah um, and I've, I've worked full-time for a summer um, picking and packing and dispatching uh, in a warehouse as well uh, and other things uh, yeah as well so uh, yeah, I yeah I have done things I, I have I've sort of experienced the real world as you can say but uh not that much I mean the people that I worked with at the picking and packing dispatch place that even though they loved me they'd probably be like oh he hasn't experienced the real world he's a privileged creative kid that, that makes videos and just worked here for his summer and they're totally right they're totally right um yeah no um yeah so um, but video has always been the goal. Everything else has been part time. Um, yeah, I was I was never handed an amazing opportunity uh, to do any other sort of job that took me out of it. Really, every job that I had was part time and felt temporary. So um, it just pushed the video thing even more as well. You know, and every time I'd be. Um, you know shoving a heavy bag of linen in the laundry bin uh it would just make me think more about how if if i crack on making more videos and and meeting more people the sooner i can not do that and just do what i love um so yeah that, that was the feeling but at the same time it, it's not really an oliver twist story because the reality of it is I wasn't I only I grew up with my mum it was just me and my mum uh, and my mum isn't loaded but there was food on the table uh, I am I am privileged in that way and the money uh, that I made from all that went all towards camera equipment all of it every penny I swear um, and even the camera I use today part of that rig is is still from the money that I earn waiting tables and carrying heavy linens uh so it's a nice little reminder uh every time i pick up my camera rig that um of the work that i did it didn't it wasn't money that i just wasted going out for drinks it was i didn't go out for drinks and i saved up for this big camera thing but really what i should have done looking back is i should have worked two days a week and then had a fun childhood and had a camera rig that's what i should have done. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to advertise not having a fun childhood to save up for your dreams because childhood is everything it's the it's yeah um I do wish I had more fun as a kid because I was I was quite driven really um yeah I think I'm more fun now than I was when I was a kid <laughs> do you think you know just thinking back on like you know I got everything we've taught <clears throat> I'm not finishing I'm just listening to what you're saying and I was like yeah, yeah. 
I'm curious about a question here. You was obviously I know you went to London. You said that, and uh, but would you say because there's a saying out there, and you've you've definitely heard it that well, I don't I can't say definitely, but probably, maybe you have, but like there's a saying that as soon as you move out of your hometown, that's when you're going to be successful. Would you say that, Kenneth? Would you obviously I know you kind of moved back. Would what what's I don't know how to ask. What's your opinions on that? Would you say that, yeah, that's right, or would you disagree with that? Because a lot of times when I've asked, just to give you some more context on this, a lot of times when I've asked people that, they've been like, yeah, because you're taking yourself away from the memories and distractions, parents, friends, things like that. Then, you know, what, what would you say? What's your opinion on that one? In some regard, yeah, I definitely agree, because just based on the point that you said, but because it forces you to create new memories. Uh, and at that stage in your life, when you do move out, a lot of your new memories are career based. So, yeah, definitely. For that reason alone, you move into a new place. You've got to create memories there. So you, you start your career. Uh, and also, if you, usually if you're moving out, um, you have to pay for rent anyway. So you've got to make money. So you do start your career, whether you like it or not. Or even if you're at university, you start your career because by going to uni you've bought time uh to be able like you said uni's kind of part-time anyway so you've got time to do your own thing uh and start your own business and get involved with something like i got involved with cluster for example mm. but yeah i'd say but i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's essential either um uh i i definitely moving to london was amazing and i don't regret it one bit and i'm i was fortunate to be able to do it but uh, the reason I moved back is because of COVID. My landlord was selling the house in COVID uh, and it was deep in lockdown and we couldn't leave the house at all, really, uh, other than to go to Aldi. And uh, and I, the rent is so expensive in London and the only London experience I was getting was the Aldi. <laughs> so uh, if it was wise to move back and I only thought it was temporary at the time, but um but no i managed to keep my job for a bit and then i thought hang on a second i've moved back home uh i've actually got time and don't have to spend as much money now so i can afford to take the risk and start up for myself so um and i do think i could have done this without university definitely the spinning shape side of things mm. i could have not gone to uni and i could have started my own video production company regardless of moving out regardless of moving to uni so i don't think it's essential but it definitely you're right it definitely changes your mindset definitely as soon as you step foot outside and you you're living somewhere else you really feel like everything's on your shoulders your career everything and it does feel like the time is now really it doesn't feel like it's in the future anymore it feels right oh, okay i've moved out now it starts now it begins um so yeah it's I, I it's really good for your brain yeah definitely agree with that but i also don't think it's essential either you can definitely um set up in your hometown hometown like what steve jobs what was apple like set up in what was his, his, his grandma's garage or something like that was it his yeah. mother's garage yeah, I think like, it was his, i think it yeah. was either his grands or his neighbors or something like that somebody yeah, yeah. close to his house yeah yeah exactly so uh, I don't know, there's success, successful examples of both. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, for example, even though he's a famous university dropout, at the end of the day, he did start Facebook because of what he'd seen at university. And it was created with people that he met at university. So even, even examples against university, like, oh, Mark Zuckerberg didn't graduate, he dropped out. It's like, yes, but Mark Zuckerberg came up with the idea for Facebook because of university and how everyone was mingling. The man had no social life before university. It's Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't want to diss Mark too much. But <laughs> no, he's a yeah. he's he's yeah, he he's he's definitely an example of somebody that can do it because even though he went to was it Harvard University? Was it Harvard yeah, University? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. He uh, his parents didn't have they had money but not to the extent of somebody that's like Jeff Bezos' parents, not to that time. They had, they were all right. I'm sure they were teachers or something. Kind of like yourself. I think they were teachers or some, something. I can't remember, to be honest with you, but somebody will be going absolutely mental right now. Be like, how on earth don't you know that? But 
we'll just say he's, they were teachers. He didn't. They had. They were. He was like middle class or something like that. So he wasn't lower. But you know, whether it's like Jeff Bezos' parents were on like a quarter million a year, and that's it's a little bit different. But still, really, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, his, he got his first loan was from his parents for two hundred fifty thousand. So they gave him two hundred fifty thousand cash and was like, "Yeah, they would start, use that to start Amazon." So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's oh, man, that's crazy because I thought that Amazon started out as a little bookshop because that was the uh, um, from social media people have posted inspirational stuff like Amazon just used to be a bookshop. But I mean, it totally makes sense that the reality is that it's a uh, online two hundred fifty thousand. Not a bookshop. <laughs> it did, it did, yeah, it did. It, there's the thing, it did start off as a bookshop, but to take it online and stuff, it, it yeah, cost a yeah. lot of money then. So he got money from his parents, which yeah, all right, fair enough. But um I'm curious, <laughs> like, see, like, you know, everybody in life, uh very like motivational thing here, but everybody in life has obstacles and they always figure out ways to overcome the obstacles, like whether that be like if some people have a lot of stress, so they'll go for a walk or they'll go for a pint or a gin or they'll go and sit with a girlfriend or that or whatever that may be, or boyfriend or whatever. But like when obstacles come your way, what's like, obviously not everything because it might be like things that you kind of like keep to yourself, like, you know, maybe you meditate a lot or some, just something like that. But like what's maybe, we'll say like, what's maybe your top three things you use when there's an obstacle comes in your way? How do you like, not like, technical wise because i know you'll have equipment and things like that i mean like mentally how do you deal with that um i go on a lot of walks i'm very lucky to live in the countryside mm -hmm. um so i mean i live in nottinghamshire so it's hardly the lake district but it is but it is nice uh i, I put my wellies on i go for a walk in the fields um that's nice and it gets you away from everything uh, in london it wasn't the same but in london my equivalent of that would be um not not for fitness reasons at all but i would get on my bike and i'd ride around central london uh just to feel a part of it the fact that i'm sat on a bike riding through canary wharf because i can just cycle there and that close was really inspiring to me younger so when i was younger so uh yeah, the, the, it, it, that would get me inspired. Nowadays, a walk will, will get me inspired just because of the stuff I think about. Um, other than that, um, I don't meditate. I don't, there's there's no ritual that I have for stuff like that at all. Um, I don't really get angry at all, ever. Um, but I guess I do get frustrated. One of my main things to unwind would be playing FIFA, to be honest. And I know I may be too old to play FIFA, but I, I, I play pro clubs with friends a lot. I love playing up front and pretending I'm a striker. I love football. And to be honest, they're the only times I do get angry when people don't pass to me. So I think, yeah, and that brings the rage out of me. But it's fun knowing that that rage is for an absolutely pointless reason and not mm. for anything to do with my business. So that's how I get all my rage out anyway. I play a bit of FIFA. Mm. Um, I know loads of young people will relate to me in that, that video games is not a waste of time. It really, that video games are a way to relax and unwind. It's like, it's like uh, I know a lot of, I don't want to dis. I don't want to dis full full blown adults, <laughs> but I know adults will definitely say that video games are a waste of time. But they'll watch TV from seven pm till ten pm every night, uh, and I think that video games is TV, but it tests your brain a bit. So video games are great. I definitely, and this is coming from someone that makes videos. I'm preferring video games to TV. So yeah, video games definitely a good way of unwinding. But the main way for me would be going for a walk, I think. Um, well, that's like, um, I mean, well, I don't get paid from this yet, but I will do. So that when this becomes full time and stuff and I get to hopefully take this on the next level, I, I, I anybody who knows me knows I don't watch TV, don't watch Netflix, don't watch uh, Prime, I don't watch Sky, there's Sky in the house, I don't watch it though. Like, I, I don't watch TV, I watch, I, I honestly, and make my youtube stuff but i either watch fitness stuff i compete obviously gonna watch fitness stuff or i watch podcasts I, I don't watch telly but like i would love to be involved in the telly industry like maybe like hosting a show or something like that. i'd love to do that but i don't watch telly like i don't because i feel like i all when i'm watching something i'm like 
hey, you know, I could actually create something better than that. Like, I've got a better idea than that. Like, if that uh, that that type of thing. It's very like, um, yeah, it's very. Uh, I don't know. I could definitely see where you come from. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I know what you mean about TV. I, I especially relate to that when my mum watches uh, awful American dramas about people losing weight. Uh, and she watches it like all she's gonna hate me for saying this she watches it like all day on a Sunday while she's sewing or something so she's being creative but she's watching this awful stuff on television I don't get it at all uh, because if I was doing something creative with my hands I'd want to listen to music or put on a podcast Um, I do I do watch Netflix but that is that's that's the beginning and end of my tv journey really uh, as someone that studied film, I love going to the cinema. So uh, I'm not really a stay at home and watch a film kind of guy. I'm more of a come on, the new Spider Man film's out. Let's go to the cinema right now because uh, I love that whole experience. Mm. Um, but I, I've got enough hobbies anyway because I love I love going to the cinema. Cinema. I go for my walks every single day. Uh, I play video games with friends occasionally. That's fun. Even play a bit of Minecraft. Uh, just for building it's creative it's fun um, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah yeah and like um yeah if you play minecraft join us on the server i'll send you an invite but yeah um, yeah yeah definitely um but i'm a big forest fan as well so i go to forest games i've got a season ticket yeah i've got my hobbies but those scheduled hobbies i think are really good going for a walk every day having being a forest fan means it's like a hobby that's set so even when I'm ridiculously busy, if I'm really stressed out with my work, I'm going to a forest game tomorrow night, Tuesday night. We play Barnsley. It's like it's a scheduled hobby. And I love that. So when people join groups and they're like, yeah, I don't just go cycling. I'm a part of a group of cyclists. Uh, I don't sympathize with that at all because I'm really unfit. But I really, yeah, I'm very inspired by that because I like the scheduled hobby. It's it's like saying, no, no, you need to relax today. No exceptions. You're relaxing now. I feel like if I didn't have a scheduled hobby, like my daily walk and my going to Nottingham Forest, I feel like I'd go a bit insane because I've, especially when you work for yourself, you make your own hours. So when you don't work, you feel, you, you will know what I mean with the podcasts. Mm. When you don't work for that day, you, you feel unproductive. Whereas when you've got scheduled hobbies, uh, everything feels right, like what you're doing is right. But mm. every it's each to their own, really, as well. Because some some people I know, uh, I'm friends with a lot of artists, and they hate the idea of scheduling their life. They just make art for a living, and they make art whenever they feel like it. And some days they don't make art, and some days they do, and that's their life. And I'm very very jealous of that. But I can't do that. I need some. I need my hobbies to be scheduled because otherwise. I will either only work for an entire week and overwork myself, or I will forget to work for an entire week. Mm. Uh, So, yeah. I'm quite quite like that as well. As you say, I can definitely relate to you. I feel like if I'm not doing, even though with a podcast, um, as anybody knows that follow along, it's only like one clip. And then the day that a show comes out, that picture of that show comes out, blah, 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 blah. But... I still feel like if I'm not developing questions, if I'm not writing down, if I'm not looking through, because luckily I've kind of developed a thing now where I can not not pick who I want, but to an extent I can, because you obviously you work really hard to get a bunch of shows, and then once you've got them lined up, then you can start to like choose again, and then when that gets down, you can go. You need to start picking, you know, ever more people, and then you can pick less and more and less and more and less and so on and so on, but. The there's I'm I'm so with you on that one as well that if you're not doing anything that like stimulates your brain or something you genuinely feel like you're it's a waste day. It's like with training. I always really ever, well, everybody that knows me will know that uh, especially if they watches all these all these podcasts will know I relate everything back to my training. Like if 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 I'm not training that day, like where it be we take you know because competition training actually starts today for March thirteenth. So like we were two you took two days off there to get your body ready, body body bar, but. It kind of it, it does feel like wow I've sat here done nothing because you're not you can't do you can't do anything but you feel so unproductive so lazy and that but you're not you're actually just taking the precaution and taking the time to you know focus and get better if that makes sense it's 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 very um 
yeah, I can definitely relate to, but there'll definitely be a lot of people that can relate to what you're saying as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy, but. It's weird. It really, it really isn't each to their own thing. It really is. Uh, every person's so different on what keeps them motivated, what helps them unwind, what helps them reset their brain. I'm jealous of the people that meditate. I've never even tried it, but I'm jealous of them. The, the ability to think about nothing for an hour and just reset your mind is awesome. Um, but I kind of do that when I play FIFA with my mates or when I play Minecraft. I think about a video game as something that's not important, like TV, but it keeps your brain occupied unlike tv because you've got stuff to do in the game i like being productive even when i'm having fun so that's why that's why the video games are good for me because i feel like i'm getting something done i'm leveling up or something like that that's just how i am as a person but uh i unwind it's the same thing with if you're a bit of a fitness buff as well getting fitter everything you're doing it's fun but at the same time you're there's a benefit there's something to work towards but i'm not going to compare gaming to fitness because it's very clear that fitness is more important <laughs> for your body well, where it's... yeah yeah well yeah yes and no <clears throat> I'd, i agree with you the it's obviously better well okay well, well okay we'll, we'll talk about this the the right gaming is good for your brain right because it keeps you strategic like for instance if you're playing like if anybody knows you know clash of clans have you ever heard of clash of clans yeah 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 of course uh, gamer you definitely have yeah i still play it and uh, i've been playing it for over 10 years now it, it's crazy but it, it it keeps me strategically going because you have to look at someone and be like okay you know, certain base, certain type thing, what's the numbers of this? And then you then you come away and I'm like, okay, then I can put it into a work. So if I'm doing this workflow while a video is uh, rendering, I could then be doing the art on my phone. And then once that's done, I could then be doing the bio and stuff. So you do get to like, to, like multitask yeah. with different things how long it takes. Strategic games and that are good. But weightlifting is good for your mental health and that. I totally agree. But it's bad in a way because it gives you body dysmorphia. Like that's something I've developed from losing a lot of weight to then, you know, being really small and then building way back up again. It, you do kind of, you do get, you do think you're really, really small and you're really weak. And then you speak to someone about your lifts and they're like, what? And then you're like, that's not a lot though. The boy I trained with this morning, it's like, yeah, well, that, then you go to a normal place and it, it's very like, I don't want to talk myself up, but it's, ve it's, it's very weird. But like, I'm totally with you. They both kind of have their dis, obviously, sitting around gaming a lot it's not good for your legs and things like that because it can cause like blood clots in your glutes and things but then lifting weights is bad for your heart because you're putting a lot of stress on your chest a lot of breathing a lot of like stress in your brain you can get blood they both kind of correlate if you see where i'm coming from yeah no i definitely i definitely do i i, I think it it also do, i think the reason i look at uh, weightlifting for example in such a positive light is because at the moment right this minute I'm so unfit I probably I would probably struggle to run a mile actually no I could run a mile I don't want to say that but uh, I'm, I'm ridiculously unfit at the moment since lockdown I've been really unfit so whenever you talk about that even though what you're talking about is really like scary stuff and negative stuff. All I'm, all I'm seeing is inspiration. <laughs> I'm oh, looking at you thinking, wow, well, that's inspiring. <laughs> if your problem is that is body dysmorphia because you're working out too hard, that's that's making me jealous. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I I totally get you. Um, I totally get what you mean. But there, there, you can have too much of anything, can't you? As well. Um, it's 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 one problem with it getting fits one thing uh but then working yourself to become some absolute unit uh it's not really essential is it for life uh, you don't oh, need oh, to oh, be oh. a jacked unit but oh, at the same time if if you feel if you feel good like that then why not but obviously i'm right now i'm learning the reasons why not <laughs> yeah there's because like I do strongman, so it's a little bit different. It's not your average like getting on stage in your bikini or nothing like that. Nothing wrong with that because I do <laughs> I have friends that literally do that. They jump on stage and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm not a type of guy. But you do get like there does come for me. It's lifts mainly and weights. If I'm trained, because the guy I train with, I'm not trying to like kiss him when I'm like here. But he is a lot stronger than me. It's just what it is. He's had 
10 years training again, like a lot longer than I have. I've only been in this for not that long. So like, it does come down to like, you do get kind of jealous in a way type thing. But then again, I guess if you play when you're playing games, when people see you at a certain pace and that, they get jealous again. Like if you're a certain level, where it be Call of Duty, Clash of Clans, if you're really good at Minecraft, yeah. if you've been building a world or something like that, people do get jealous of that. It, it, it's a very like relatable subject. But the reason that I like, I'm kind of glad you brought the Minecraft thing up, is that I kind of relate a, a few things in life to Minecraft. And the reason I'll tell you why is because the longer you spend building something, the better it's going to be, the more you're going to learn. But the longer you spend building something, the better it's going to be, the more hate you're going to get. It's like everything in life. It's just you can relate all that back to everything in life. The more you do in life, the more you try and be, the more you try to help yourself, the more your hate you're going to get because people can't put yourself in their position. So yeah. it's, it's a weird analogy to relate Minecraft to life. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, pros and cons, if you get what I'm talking about. Oh no, trust me, a lot of my friends would be able to relate a lot of things to Minecraft. And life. <laughs> they, would, they would relate everything between Minecraft and life. Minecraft <laughs> is the best game of all time, in my opinion. You can build anything. It's an infinite world. It's amazing. It's just endless inspiration. And I think what you said is a great analogy. It really is. I do think... Um, yeah, exactly. Um, the the more you build, the more jealous people will get. It, it's it's a fact. It's why I was bullied when I was in secondary school. Uh, it's But now, would they take the mick out of me now? Probably, yeah, if they were together. I can imagine if there's a couple friends from uh, my school thinking, oh, look at him now. Look, oh, look at his LinkedIn. He thinks he's sick. Oh, he's, he's got his own video production company and he's working for something called a cluster. What is that? <laughs> it's like they, they might still take the mick out of it, but at the end of the day, do I care? <laughs> no, of course I don't. Um, I, I don't care. Um, I may look at what they're doing and I might not know that they're taking the mick out of me and I might go, oh, good on them. They're doing really well. And they might take the mick out of me. But does it matter? No, especially especially not when the abuse is online. When, if the abuse is online, uh, it's because they don't have the courage to say it to your face, like you said earlier. So oh, if it is to your face, if it is to your face, they're drunk or they are jealous, genuinely jealous. Mm. There's just no point in being negative about anything. Mm. Unless you're like a racist and someone's calling you out for being racist or something like that, then there's no reason to be negative. Mm. Uh, yeah. The, uh, a famous... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story when we're off the podcast. But like, yeah, I think that... There's a lot of funny things, you know, there was one thing I seen on Instagram, a, a very, um, I'll just say, it, a very, a funny video I seen on Instagram, and it was a, a guy that got bullied, and um, his mate wrote something, his mate, was it his mate? No, he was, it was, his mate noticed, to, noticed something on his, I can't remember what his Instagram, yeah, because obviously the video was Instagram, what am I talking about? Noticed something on Instagram, but obviously he put it on that Reels thing, you know, when it's kind of like TikTok, but for Instagram. Yeah. And uh, he was like, watch, it was something, it was the recorded voice, it was like, watch me catch my school bully. And I was like, all right, I'm going to watch this. I'm curious. So like pretty much along along the lines of this, what happened was a guy commented something, he called him, I don't want to say what he said because it's very like, you just don't say that type of stuff. It wasn't racist or nothing, it just, it's very rude, so I'm not going to say it. Pretty much called him an idiot in completely other words. And he was like, okay, so he commented back to the boy. I was like, here, I really appreciate you. He, he commented back and I was like, I really appreciate your comment. I'm going to follow you and DM you. I want to speak to you. And the guy pretty much told him to um, go away. In other words, I'm sure people can know what I'm talking about here. He DM'd the boy and was like, just to let you know, um, you know, I really appreciate your comment. I've screenshotted your post and I've sent it to your employer, your local authorities and your parents. So let's hope when you turn up to your job on Monday, let's see how your employers take, how you're speaking to people online. And I was like, class. I was like, class. I was like, if you actually did it, I was like, that's class. I, I, I put my phone down and my mum was like, what are you laughing at? I was like, read this. I was like, this is the guy's reaction. He contacted the guy's boss and sent him the, the abuse he was getting online. And apparently it didn't go down well. His boss was going mental. It's like, well. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. What an absolute legend. <laughs> that's, it, yeah. I was like, wow. That, that story blew me away when I, when I read it or watched it, I guess. Or read it, watched it. I don't, I don't know how to describe Instagram Reels. I guess you can read and watch at the same time. But it was like, whatever you want to call it, it was that. It was, 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, I know what you mean. It was genius. <laughs> it was absolutely genius. The boy, I still follow him on Instagram, but absolute legend. <laughs> absolute legend they've done that. I was like, wait, Gigi has like half a million followers now and everyone. It's mental. Yeah. But, this guy needs a new hobby as well if he's just doing that online. Not not the guy that's exposed him. I mean, the guy leaving the negative comments. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah. He needs, he's, his life uh, must suck to leave negative yeah, comments. Oh, yeah. Definitely. definitely. Must yeah. Suck. He, he must doesn't have the drive to turn it around either, which is another yeah, thing. Yeah, he'll probably go mental and, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's, it's crazy. But, yeah, I want to, uh, I, I, I do want to ask you, you know, just before we go or anything, is there anything that you're working on right now? Obviously, I know cluster and stuff, we've talked about that, but anything you personally are working on right now that people can maybe like, maybe if you need a help with, or maybe like, you know, anybody could like, what or we'll say that, anything you need a help with, and also what your advice would be to somebody that's wanting to do what you, that's a young, younger person that's wanting to do what you did, that's kind of, do I take the step to start my business early, or what would you say? Um, well, firstly, things we're doing, I mean, I'm going to mention Cluster again, but my advice would be to follow Cluster on any social platform of your choice at Cluster Live and uh, use Cluster, not, not for us to make money, there's a free version, and feel free to send me an email telling me what you think of it, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, at the moment, what what I need on Cluster is I need to get a community together that are using Cluster to help themselves with their ideas. Or for example, like ideas for podcast ideas, mm -hmm. um, writing about all these kind of things, creating their own little mind maps, developing projects, taking notes for meetings mm -hmm. um, and sharing what they've been doing with me on Cluster so that I can, because at the moment uh, we have done testing. We've obviously tested Cluster, but um, I'm excited to see how people use it in the real world and we want to change it based on how people use it. There might be features that we want to add and uh, anyone can be a part of that based on suggestions they give. Uh, if someone shoots me a personal email asking me about that, I'll be yeah. happy to take a look. But no, um, other things that people could check out, I guess they could go to spinningshapes.com. Um, we've got yeah a bunch of films there's going to be a cool film about drill music coming out soon a charity in knots uh hired me to make a film about drill uh yeah which is good because I'm, I'm quite biased on the topic because i'm very for drill music because i believe in freedom of speech and artist expression but it's also linked to crime uh and i'm well aware of that and obviously the uh, documentary explores that as well but to be honest, um, if anyone's in, in the Nottingham area listening to this, um, give me a message. If, if you want to help out on a shoot or anything like that, maybe you're a, a junior editor and you want some experience or you're a young animator or something, give me a message. Uh, like I said, I can't guarantee that if anyone emails me asking for paid work, they'll get it because I'm not God. I run a small business. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm obviously open to helping people, working with people, just like people have done the same thing with me. Mm. Um, and um, sorry, what was your question about advice? So I went on a tangent. Well, about I was going to ask you for your social medias as well. But like before, I, before I do that, um, it was just like if you're, if anybody, you know how like you were quite young when you started your business. Or I know, yeah. and the youngest person that watches this is the young, because obviously it says and. I don't know if you meant to talk about this or not, but in the analytics, said the youngest person is like 16 to 25. So like the youngest is nobody younger than that. So say there's somebody, you know, boy, girl, knowing binary, whatever that person um, goes by, do you think, what would your, uh, uh, what would your advice to them to be if they want to start their own business? Not necessarily even creative stuff, just, I don't know, a drinks business or and just anything like that. What's your advice for them to, should I take the step or should I not? If they're on like the hinge right now, what's your... What's your well, well, for a start, should I take the step? Should I, should they not? That that's an obvious question to answer. The answer is yes. If you want to do it and you and you love doing it, or you're passionate about the idea, there's no reason not to. 
Uh, and also, when you're young, especially at the age of 16, wow, you've got time on your hands. Mm. And I know a lot of people uh, that are older than me or even people my age that work full time for other people, they are jealous of that. People, If you have time on your side, that is a massive weapon. So use it. If you're 16 years old and you want to start a drinks business, if you're 16, you might be at the end of you'll be in college. So uh, which I know in college, there's a lot of work, but wow, you, you probably don't need to get a job. You've got that time on your hands. Use it. We've only got 24 hours in a day. And if you're not working nine to five, you should have so much more energy to be able to do that kind of stuff. Why, why not go for it? Um, but when you're young as well, don't work yourself too hard because I have regrets of not having enough fun, especially when my first year of university, living with the old lady, etc. cetera. Uh, I wish I'd had more fun, but I still don't regret anything because I'm really happy with where I am now. But no, no, I think if you're passionate about it, do it. There's, there's, unless you can really give me an amazing reason why you shouldn't do it. If you can give me an excuse to why you shouldn't do it, then you shouldn't do it because that means you don't really want to do it. I think if you are really passionate about something um, and you want to do it, you know deep down that you should go for it. And, and, and the, the other bit of advice that actually means something as well is uh, a lot of stuff is about who you know. A lot of business is about who you know. Um, even though I, I've got the ability to make videos, um, yeah, I can edit, yeah, I can shoot good footage, whatever. If I don't know anybody, then how am I going to make any money and get any clients? So get to know people, uh, whether that's... Um, some people are lucky in that their parents work in the industry that they aspire to be. And I'm not one of those people. My in was university. It was going to like job fairs when I was younger at my college, going to little networking things, making my own business cards, all that sort of thing. And back when I was younger, yeah. Um, I may not have been worth hiring when I was younger, you know, I'm 16, 17 years old. Um, guy with a camera i'm talking to a guy that owns a big business he's not going to use me for video yeah because i'm really young but he admires the fact that i gave him my business card and this example that i'm talking about i then when i was a few years ago i made a promotional video for him so a few years later he thought oh this kid was really nice what's he up to now they looked me up they realized that i make videos for a living now and they hired me so even if you're not ready yet, even if you don't think you're good enough, you can still get yourself out there, get talking to people, talk to people about the fact that you're passionate about something, because that's just as valuable as being good at something, because pa being passionate is basically just saying you will be good at something in the future. So Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more if you're there, to be honest with you. Um, I think that, I think nowadays, there's a there is there's a push for entrepreneurs like I always people hate that saying but it's true there's a very push for it but I, yeah I'm so for you like I think that so for it sorry I think that if you're gonna do it you may as well do it when you're young because the loans in that you can get are a lot better and also the fact that if you are going to do that sort of thing and say you do go into debt and that it gets wiped after like ten years I'm not I'm not advising anybody to take a loan non disclaimer whatever it's called financial it's not financial advice but it's true but yeah anyway i want to um before we go i do want to ask you what's your if you want to give them out what is your like instagram and twitter and that so people maybe could get a hold of you they're obviously they will be in the bio for those that know but for those that are oh, watching thanks. this what what is your social media um so um i'd say don't follow me follow my business because mm -hmm. if you follow me you're just gonna get uh, me screaming that Nottingham Forest have let in a goal. Follow at Spinning Shapes, uh, at Spinning Shapes Films or at Spinning Shapes Limited on Instagram. But to be honest, you don't need at symbols. Just search Spinning Shapes on any of your social networks and we'll, we'll be the top result, I'm sure. Um, same with Cluster, uh, at Cluster Live on any social network and it will be cluster.live once it's released so if, you, if you've listened this far in the podcast then you should definitely add cluster.live to your bookmarks because at some point in february you're going to click on that link and you'll be able to create a free account and test it out and send me hate on social media if you hate it so <laughs>
Looking forward that to note, that. Yeah. yeah, on that note, I want to say uh, the same with me. You guys know in, in Kyle's combo absolutely everywhere. Um, Mr. Big Kyle is what I go by. Everybody's asked why that is. It's because uh, because I do things bigger than normal, as they say. So you can follow me personally. If you don't want to follow me because you don't want to see me lifting my top off or something like that or screaming and shouting at weights, you can follow in Kyle's combo. Thank you very much. I'll see you all later. See you later. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers.